I mean, Palestine, and he was actually recalled because of his brutality and the protests about his brutality. Uh, and that's rare that a Roman governor would actually be recalled because of br uh, brutality. So again, um, you know, <laughs> these things uh, are um, sources outside the scripture that conflict to some extent with materials we've become familiar with. So uh, you say, how come? I think Josephus says it all, and for those who've taken my scrolls class, he says that the, the, the materials of this time have all been falsified to flatter the Romans and vilify the Jews. And he said he isn't going to do that in his history, and then he right ahead goes on and does it as we show. What do we mean flat? Uh, uh, that's what has occurred in almost all the writings, and we don't understand, I can read you that passage, we don't understand the significance of that, because we don't, know, we don't realize how brutal the Roman Empire actually was and what it took to have your materials survive in. You could not have materials that were going to be critical to any great extent of Roman emperors or uh, uh, Roman officials and expect them to circulate and survive, except in an underground map. Uh, he says here in the introduction to his uh, Jewish war here, which I think most people overlook, it's in the very first paragraph. He said, the war of the Jews against the Romans was the greatest of our time. This is in his Jewish war, where he wants to praise Titus, the emperor to be. Greater than perhaps any recorded struggle, whether between cities and nations, that's a little exaggerated, obviously. Yet persons, and here comes the point, with no first-hand knowledge, accepting baseless and inconsistent stories on the, on the basis of hearsay, have written garbled accounts of it, while eyewitnesses have been falsified, either to flatter the Romans or to vilify the Jews. Eulogy or abuse being substituted for factual record. That's right in the first paragraph of Josephus, and that in his, uh, is his own time. He's protesting about histories. But he says that is the defect of historical writing in his time. Now, if we see, on this, in this given area, if we see materials that, that seem to have those flaws, then we should be very careful of them. Now, the picture of Pilate, to my mind, is a perfect example of flattering the Romans and vilifying the Jews. That Pilate is pronounced, I want no, no, no part of the blood of this guilty, uh, of this innocent man. So why is he putting him up on a cross then? Because only the Romans had the, uh, had the uh, um, authority to, uh, to give the death penalty. I mean, we've been through all this, but there's a perfect case of point. Or Herod Antipas, oh, I don't want to kill John the Baptist. He's such a decent, righteous man. I recognize him as a, as a righteous, pious man. But this woman uh, did a, a sexy dance, and therefore I have to execute him. Uh, and so on and so forth. But these are, the, these are the instances where we have actual counter-indicating material which show that we have flattery of Roman officials going on. We have, as I said, centurions who are presented as saints. Roman centurions who give uh, heavily to Jewish causes, supposedly. And this is like... Um, this is almost, to my mind, I know that the believer doesn't see it that way, but I've come to see it that way. This is almost like um, presenting uh, the big bad wolf as, uh, um, who's the one, like Goldilocks. Uh, you know, I mean, the, the Roman centurion from Caesarea, who in Josephus says that the Caesarean legionnaires were particularly brutal, and they were the ones who go to the Jews more than any other legionnaires by their violence and brutality to revolt against Rome, then they're presented as uh, being pious, righteous, interested in, uh, in uh, Jewish, uh, Jewish religious causes and so on. The centurions uh, are one of the first people to acknowledge Jesus as the Christ. The only negative portrayal of centurions is when they part his clothing at the uh, at the uh, crucifixion, but other times, centurions are very, uh, very good, decent, noble, and uh, caring people. And it's the Jews who are vilified constantly. Oh, Chorazin and Bethside, if the faith that had been shown, uh, I, I forget how it's put, um, etc., elsewhere had been shown by you, you would have long ago been saved, or so on. So, 
Lebanon, Phoenicia, Samaritans, every people are correct and presented positively. So I think that is an outcome of the war against Rome. The Jews have got themselves in such a predicament in the, uh, in the first century with their resistance that they became vilified throughout the Roman Empire in terms of at least the establishment. So um, then you have the dispute, as we're going to see within the early church, uh, with, between the Paul and the James parties that was able to capitalize on that vilification in order to press home certain points about the law, which is where we are standing here, that Paul is a representative of the party of the anti-law people, and they're feeling oppressed by the pro-law people within the movement, not outside it, and they express their antagonism and, and animus, as we will see, uh, in terms of the general hostility that is developed in the Roman uh, um, imperial circles over the uh, obstreperousness of Jews generally in the resistance era. Yeah. Um, the motivation for this flattering of the Romans, would it be... Um, Power. Could it, survival. Could it be survival? Yeah, yeah that's yeah, right. absolutely. Power and survival. Sure. And the people who didn't flatter them all were killed. Josephus flatters the Romans, even though he says he isn't going to. He goes on to talk about how, how well, even in the same introduction, it's laughable. It's, uh, you don't mind if I, uh, if I heap abuse on Josephus, I'm sure. But uh, if it's anything closer to home than Josephus, people <coughs> get their backs up, which is what I said, that this subject you, you can't win in, because if you say anything, someone's going to be offended. And particularly, as they say, religious things are the closest things to people's uh, souls, and also their respect for their elders, and their uh, sol the solidarity with their community and the care that they feel for the traditions that their uh, uh, forefathers have handed down to them. It's a normal tribal loyalty that all feel. In Arabic it's uh, expressed in terms of asabiya, feeling for your uh, people, tribe, community, and so on. He says, however, it's not my intention to counter the champions of the Romans by exaggerating the heroism of my own countrymen. I'll state the facts accurately and impartially. At the same time, the language which our court events reflect my own feelings and emotions for I must permit myself to bewail my country's tragedy. She was destroyed by internal dissensions, and the Romans, who so unwillingly set fire to the temple, were brought in by the Jews' self-appointed rulers. As Titus Caesar, the temple's destroyer, has testified. Uh, you know, he thinks that a puppet government of Herodians and uh, people that the Romans put in power uh, um, is a valid excuse for coming into the country, sure. The, as Josephus tells us, the Pharisees, the chief priests, and the men of power, the Herodians, when the revolution grew out of hand, invited the Romans' troops into the country to put it down, much like the Americans may be in Iraq, though I don't think that 